Nick Hilke is outside the Amex West Ham Fan TV. Uh, Mike, uh, very fortunate to come away that the Amex today with a point. <laughs> I, I don't know how, how on earth I watch that game and watching VAR in play, to be honest. That's the first game I've seen this season with VAR in play. I think it's just... It's, Saved us. Yeah, it did save us, but it's just weird. It's, it's the just, purity out of the game. Yeah, it's like, what's, you know, you kind of have to wait like, what, you have to wait like at least five minutes to know that you've actually scored a legitimate goal to think like, okay, you can act, you can start celebrating that goal. But look, taking VAR away, um, I thought I thought the game itself was, you know, it was, it was like, it was an all right game. It wasn't like, I wouldn't say it was one for the purists to say, um, but it was a, it wasn't the fact the greatest game to watch. Um, obviously, they've come off the you know like last week like winning three 0 and we've come off like a really bad defeat last week. So, you know, for us for us to be able to actually come and for us to be able to come and like you know obviously there were a lot of changes to the team, um, so the team was a little bit disjointed. They. I did think that it needed to be not freshened up a bit since last week, but I thought there needed to be changes. But the changes that were made were a bit left me a bit miffed. Obviously, some were enforced, some were because you no, know, obviously not Cresswell. I don't know what happened. Obviously, whether it's because of the stick that he got on social media or what, I, I don't know. Um, but apart from the mistake that Masaraku made for the disallowed VAR goal, I actually thought he played all right today. I thought he was worthy of his place in the team. Um, I was obviously a bit worried from the start with Hernandez playing up front on his own, because I was worried more about the physicality of the side, Mike. Well, one thing we were struggling. We were struggling. One thing that Mark, I read, well, one thing that Mark Noble said was that you don't, you know, he basically said to some of the players, you can't stop if you think you can stop and look around and take your time on the ball against Brighton, then you've got another thing coming. And I thought most of the players actually heeded that advice, but I think we're actually done by like. That, I mean, the player that scored the goal and disallowed, and the, you know, the one that actually scored their equaliser, was I, I actually was really impressed with their number 11, uh, Trossard. I don't know why are we not going in for players like poor that. Clearance, so from it Diop. Was very, it was twice because the thing is, it was a poor clearance the first time from Masaraku. Well, yeah, but the thing is, the cross, like the cross, shouldn't have even been allowed to come in in the first place. That's the thing. That cross for the disallowed goal shouldn't have been allowed to come in. And in the second time, the ball wasn't the, the, ball, the ball wasn't cleared properly. So, you know, You're not closed so, down properly. Well, our defending is 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 nothing sort of shabby. It's like it's just it's like watching Sunday League football sometimes, you know. Um, but you know, I mean, look to come. Uh, look, this has never been an easy place for us to come. Um, Brighton have always been somewhat of a bogey side for us. So to be able to come here and grind out a point, I guess, even though like we ended up, find, you know, eventually taking the lead and holding it for less than what five minutes was it? Um, you know, we were we we're, we're a little bit lucky, but I'll take it. I'll take the point. Brilliant, Mike. Thank you very much, mate. Take care. Nice to see you back.